Welcome to another math episode. Today, you are going to learn how to simplify and get rid of those negative exponents. It's considered not simplified when you got a negative exponent, and I'm going to cut straight to the point. I will show you how to get rid of them really fast. When you got 4 to the negative 2 power, technically, this is on the top of an imaginary 1. Dividing by 1 does not change the meaning of 4 to the negative 2 power because anything divided by 1 is itself. But I want you to understand that that is really on the top. So all you have to do, and you can follow these steps, is switch its positions. If it's at the top, you're going to move it to the bottom. And once you move it to the bottom, it will lose its negative exponent. So that negative 2 will turn into a 2. There's nothing on the top. There's really a 1 on the numerator. And then simplify further, you know that 4 squared is 16, and that's just the one on the top. So that's it. How about if it's a variable? Same thing. This is technically on the top, so just have that imaginary one there. And all you got to do is move that x to negative 3, slide it to the bottom, switch it from top to bottom. And once you switch its positions, you lose the negative exponent. That will equal one over x to the third. What if you got a negative number with a negative exponent? The rule only applies to exponents. You are gonna flip that negative three from top to bottom, but it's going to remain a negative three. The only thing that will switch is the exponent. So that was a negative two since we flipped it to the bottom. That will now be just a 2. 1 on the top. From there, simplify it. Negative 3 squared is a positive 9 with a 1 on the top. What if you got two variables and only one of them has a negative exponent? You only move the ones with a negative exponent. So that x is technically on the top. It doesn't have a negative exponent. We're going to leave it on the top. However, the y does. So we're going to have to move that from top to bottom. We're going to write the y down here. And it will now be a 1, which is the same thing as x over y. So that is the most basic way that this can show up. It does show up in a lot of other ways. So we're going to look at that in the next slide. Before we go there, I want to make sure that you guys understand this. This only works with monomials, single terms. The moment you get two terms, and you can tell how, how many terms there are by pluses and minuses. So this is two terms. You can't say that I'm gonna write this at the bottom like that. That is not It only works for monomials. Here are other situations that you might see this. What if you got a whole bracket raised to a negative exponent? You can even move that whole bracket to the bottom, just like this. So that's negative A, B, C. And now since we moved it to the bottom, now that negative four is gonna turn into a positive four. If there's not a coefficient here, there's really an imaginary one. And all of these technically have a one exponent. I do have a video on how to explain this. If you forgot but all you got to do is distribute that 4 to each one of those exponents to simplify it so 1 on the top now that negative 1 will turn into the negative 1 to the fourth a 4 b 4 and c 4 negative 1 to the fourth is just really 1 so we can write a 1 positive 1 right there and none of these change, B4, C4. So you don't even have to write this one right there. Let's move to the second one. Now we got something at the bottom, that Z with a negative exponent. Once you have it like that, now it's at the bottom. If you switch it back to the top, it will lose its negative exponent. So we're gonna write X to the third, Y squared, Z squared. None of those in the numerator had a negative exponent. We're gonna leave those on the top. 
However, that bottom, the denominator, we're gonna move it back to the top now. Switch its positions because it had a negative exponent. And then from here, apply what you know about exponents. If they got the same base and you're multiplying, all you gotta do is add the exponents. So now you got x to the third, y squared, z to the fourth power. Moving on to the third problem. Now we got a whole bracket in a fraction raised to the negative squared power. None of these have exponents, so you can put a one right there and you are even allowed to distribute a negative exponent like that. So we'll do that first. That will get you three to the negative uh, two power and x negative two. Both of those have a negative exponent. So you're gonna switch positions. We're gonna start with that three to the negative two. We can write that at the bottom like that. It will lose its negative. And that x has a negative exponent. It was at the bottom. All you gotta do is switch it to the top and it will lose its negative exponent. You know that three squared is nine. So we can write nine at the bottom and x squared on the top. And that will be fully simplified. Going over the last question, we got a bracket at the bottom with a negative exponent. We can switch it to the top right away. So A was at the top. Now I'm switching A, B back to the top with a positive two as the exponent and then apply your rules of exponents. These have a one. If there is an exponent on the outside, distribute and you will get A times A squared, B squared and you can simplify it even further here. This has an imaginary one. That will turn into a to the third power, b squared. I want you to simplify these questions below. Remember, you don't want any negative exponents and if they do have it, whether it's a bracket or a variable or just a number, all you gotta do is switch its positions. Pause the video, try this out, and when you are done, check back and play the video for the answers. Here are the answers for those three questions. Looking at the first one, you want to put ones on the x and y, and you can distribute that negative three, and you will get this. Both of those have a negative exponent, so you got to switch the x and y's position from top to bottom and bottom to the top, and you will get that answer right there. As far as the second question, only the m has the negative exponent. So you got to move that to the bottom. And once you have it at the bottom, just apply your rules of exponents, same base, add the exponents, and you will get this answer right here. For the last question, you can do this in a different way. I wanted to show you a different way. Instead of moving the whole bracket to the top, you can even distribute the negative three first, just like that. And once you have it like that, move the ones with negative exponents, switch its positions, and just keep simplifying as you go. All these rules of exponents are confusing and I have a lot of videos on it to help you guys out. Check those out, throw me a like and subscribe if I helped you, and I will see you on the next episode. Peace.